guys. Destroy from the do-it-yourself world in the off-grid project. I haven't been on in a few days and I'll explain briefly what's going on. I think it's been a week, week and a half since I've done anything. Um, I, I knew this all along, but it's been confirmed recently that um, I just had a little, a big, big, big battle with gout. I uh, knew it years ago at Thanksgiving. I'd go down to Mom and Dad's and have all the fattening, sugary, happy fun foods. And then I'd have uh, my right hand would swell up and be pretty agonizing uh, for a week or two every year. And so I knew, I knew that's what it was. Uh, but, you know, it was Thanksgiving. It was once a year, no big deal. And I'd come back, come back to the happy homestead and carry on. Well, when we went on vacation, we were having a, a lot of uh, fun foods. I wouldn't say too much processed foods because we took everything we had that we needed with us, but we did have some donuts and some cookies and some things that are not normally in my diet and that I normally would avoid like the plague. Well, unfortunately, then when I was working on the truck, uh, this wrist, which is stiff right now, I was reaching up inside the the frame of the truck and all I could do is turn my wrist like this on a heavy stiff rusted bolt this wrist that triggered a flare-up and I've been down and out for a week and a half so as if that wasn't bad enough I decided to go on a detox and I've been um, alternating with fasting and drinking herbal teas which thankfully I have in my property um, the herbs and the, the, the things I have on my own land are good for detoxifying your body and various things and specifically the uh, uh, tarragon is good for gout regulating the blood acid levels and a lot of good stuff so I've been having tarragon tea fresh from my garden oregano tea and uh, that if anybody's had gout before they know um, the pain in my wrist was equal to a freshly broken bone day and night non-stop no mercy I had no sleep for days and that was enough to put me into fasting so I went uh, a few days with hardly anything at all except for liquids and very very light foods if anything and then I was terrified <laughs> to eat anything the pain was so intense I was terrified to eat anything at all so I decided to go on a complete absolute 100 uh, percent sugar detox I am not going to have any um, processed foods or any um, added sugars in anything at all it's not like we had a lot of it normally but you know when you grab a uh, jar of peanut butter and you start putting on some bread and it's whole wheat bread and you think hey I'm doing good for my body and then you read the ingredients they're like this is not good for you so now it comes to going to the grocery store reading the ingredients more specifically not just buying in quotes natural peanut butter but turning it around and make sure that there's nothing but peanuts in that because uh, a lot of times it's not and uh, so, and that's just one example, but it's good protein, good health. Anyway, uh, I'm going to, when I get some money, I'm going to start, um, I'm going to get a, uh, a grain mill because hand cranking with that little tiny hopper that I have, my little hand crank grain mill is great, makes good video and it's great for now and then, a rat, you know, sporadic occasional use, but I'm going to start really using our own grains and making my own bread from now and getting really, really back to basics food wise. If you've gone through what I've gone through, the suffering I've gone through, it will drive anybody to quit and, and detox. So right now I am right in the middle of some of the worst feelings a person could feel. It is rough. And so you won't see me much until it's purged. And they say once you've um, detoxified from that, then you will have more mental clarity, uh, more fitness, more energy, more, I mean, they say that you'll really, really feel good once you get over that. And um, sugar is a poison to your body, and uh, it is an addictive 
um, thing. And so now that I'm looking at what all it's in, wow, I mean, wow, I tried to be careful through the years, but then I would have a flare up now and then, and now I've, while well, I was laying there in agonizing pain, and, and those of you who have suffered it can understand, nobody else can comprehend it. While I was laying there in agony, I, I put, all, put it all together. When my arm was gone uh, two years ago, and disabled for months, when my knee, this knee blew out for months at a time, when my ankle went out, and all the various random things that I've suffered over the last couple years, all comes down to one point, and I'm done with it. I'm finished with it. So I'm going through a really rough time right now until the toxins are out, and um, it is it is hard. Uh, it causes anxiety and depression and all kinds of stuff that I hope YouTube doesn't ban me for saying. But uh, it causes a lot of uh, a lot of uh, discomfort, and it's not easy. But I'm going to do it, and I'm going to be stronger for it on the other side. So bear with me a couple more days. Meanwhile, uh, we sold it, the turkeys. I couldn't. Every motion of my whole body was like unbearable. I, you, words can't explain. There's no way. And the turkeys kept getting out, and so we put bird netting over the top, and then they'd get out of that, and so then they'd get tangled in it. And then the big guineas would get in there trying to get the turkeys' food, and ah, oh, it was like unbelievable. So. And then the chickens would get into the gardens, get into the flower beds, and get into everything. And it was like Michelle and Melanie and I, we, we, it was a, it was a, it was a whole family job, and it was nonstop. We'd rush the chickens out of the, out of the flower beds, and get them out in the backyard, and turn around, and they'd be back in something else. And we'd turn around and rush them out of there, and turn around and come back, and they would be back in something else. I mean, like literally, right behind our backs, they'd come right back in. Chickens are opportunistic and lazy feeders. And they go for the easy food. Guineas are everywhere in our property. They're everywhere. And they rove and they eat on their own. And they haven't even been eating the feed that I provided them. Hardly at all. They're really good animals to have on a homestead. If it's fenced in. But I went through all that in a separate video. We sold the turkeys and the chickens. They're gone. I'm going to raise guineas. I'm done with, with those high work, high demand, high maintenance birds. They're gone. The turkeys were cute too. And oh, I wish I could have done more videos because oh, it was so cute. They followed me everywhere. They'd be up by the house door wanting to be with me. And they were so cute. Michelle, they, she had them following her around one day and she said, this is the best day of my life. The turkeys were following me. But um, with that comes a lot of mess because the stuff that comes out of those birds is not something you want on your front porch or on your house door or right everywhere where you walk and live and um and then when the turkeys would get in the garden they're big and stupid they're not they didn't really go after our vegetables that much they did some damage but they were just like big dinosaurs tromping it over and demolishing everything just because they were big and dumb i loved them they were great and they were so cute which also makes it harder to process them at the end of the season. I didn't want to have to deal with it. I really loved them a lot. So they're gone. We are guinea farmers now. Guinea farmers. Low maintenance, low cost. They free range and forage all day, every day. You provide water and let them run. Um, there is food, but they don't touch it right now very much. They want that wild foraged food. And the chickens were just in your face. We kept Michelle's bird, and we kept a hen for, for that bird. And we kept uh, some tiny hen-sized uh, bantams. I don't know how big they'll get, but they're from the batch we had. They'll fit in the palm of your hand. And we got three bantams and a silky. We'll see how they turn out. They're in a cage, though. They're not free-range, and they're special, and I don't want anything to kill them. So they're locked up safe and secure, and they have their own food and water. Anyway, I'm just going to take care of myself right now. I'm in, a, in the depth of the slump, and it took me all day to drag myself up. Besides, if I bump this thing, it's agony, and so I'm resting it. It's going to take time for the, the, the toxins to get out. I guess there's um, uric acid 
uretic acid or something like that, crystals, and they form like knives, and they spoke, spike and hurt, and it's not nice. So I'm purging it, but I am done with sugar. I hope I never, ever, ever go back on it, and I hope that the, the gains from what I've read are so great and so amazing that hopefully I'll never want to go back to any of that junk. If I ever see a donut or a candy bar again while on vacation or a processed box of cereal, I just hope I walk away or uh, any, any fast food. And not to put down fast food, it's not all bad, but it's the cumulative effect of what we put in our bodies that can affect you. And, uh, and I'm done with that. You know, I thought I was doing good. I cut out soft drinks for the most part and only rarely had one. What some people call it a pop, some call it a soda, different names, but whatever. I had uh, pretty much eliminated that from my diet and I very rarely had some. So I, I thought I was doing good, but this vacation that we were on and the, some of the stuff we had pushed me over the edge. And then it all, be, it all turned on like a light bulb. All the sufferings of the past couple of years all the downtime, all the lost work, all pointed to, to sugar. I'm done with it. I'm going to get this video up to you guys, and I'm going to get back over to resting until this doesn't hurt when I touch it, and until I'm over this purging, because it is unpleasant. When I'm back on my feet again, I will get a electric grain mill. I will be making my own hot cereals and breads and I'll share the videos and the, the journey as I go into a whole new whole new diet and a real back to basics uh, diet can I say diet again talk to you later